This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. The 26th annual Junior John Canoe Parade is now history, but there's still much debate about whether the parade should remain at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Well, Arla Don Davis took to the streets today to hear the public's reaction and to get feedback from the culture minister. It was the first time in several years that a Junior John Canoe Parade took center stage in a national stadium. And even though cultural officials say this year was a success, a few Bahamians feel the idea to host a Junior Cultural Parade in the national stadium was not the best choice. Well, I really feel it because I was at it on Saturday. And to my experience as a John Canoe, um, you really ain't feeling it because it's not like when you're on the main street. Every festival is in the main downtown. Anywhere in the world. They move it from old, old on Bay Street. That's where all the tourists and everybody know it to be open. That's where all the cruise ships be. At least that's where the tourists could come and see what our, you know, John knows all about, even if they're visiting for the first time. What really surprised me about what I read in the paper this morning about they charging the parents to bring the children down there to, to, uh, view, this, to, to view this show, that wasn't good for the public. But contrary to that, Culture Minister Dr. Danny Johnson says he received positive feedback about the parade's venue change. We uh, surveyed the people who came to the event, and those who came to the event live um, seemed to like it about 80 to 20. Um, those who watched on television enjoyed the, the color, the coordination. Now, despite all the noise in the market, Mr. Johnson says creating a safer environment for Bahamian families during the parade is a major priority for his ministry. The big, huge thing we did on the weekend, we demonstrated we had the carnival going on, a couple thousand people over there, Mars, Father Marsh and Peter's basketball tournament going on, a few hundred people there, and Junior Junkanoo going on, about 12,000 people there, in a safe space, no criminal incidents. This year's parade saw participation from St. John's College and the Lyford Key International School, a first for them. Cultural officials are encouraging more private schools to participate in an effort to make the parade bigger and a whole lot better next time around. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. Well, the National Panhellenic Council has installed a new president. Harrison Lockhart, a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, took the oath of office last night. The NPHC is the coordinating body for the nine historical African-American fraternities and sororities. Omar Ambrister from Kappa Alpha Psi took the oath of vice president. Recording secretary is Samantha Anderson from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. The corresponding secretary is Georgian Albrey from Zeta Phi Beta Sorority. Kendrick Albrey from Phi Beta Sigma took the position of treasurer. The financial secretary is Randolph Minnis from Omega Psi Phi Fraternity. Keenan Johnson from Alpha Phi Alpha was elected parliamentarian. And Sonia Williamson from Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority took the position of chaplain. Now the council promotes interaction through forums, meetings, and other mediums for the exchange of information and engages in cooperative programming and initiatives through various activities and functions. Well, still to come, a world and Olympic champion in town to train. Find out more about his trip in ZNS Total Sports. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jimenita Swain. The Bahamas has assumed chairmanship of the United Nations Shark Coalition, which affords the country a leadership role on a globally recognized platform. Since July 2011, government has banned shark fishing in Bahamian waters. According to the Pew Charitable Trust, a multi-billion dollar entity which works to establish shark sanctuaries and which underwrites the cost of coalition activities, shark diving provides some $78 million to the Bahamian economy annually in tourism revenue. The Bahamas Ambassador to the United United Nations and the Organization of American States, His Excellency Dr. Allison Raming accepted the chairmanship on behalf of the country. 
And other business news, financial industry stakeholders are set to host a seminar on the European Union's Alternative Investment Fund discussing impacts, opportunities and challenges. The session is being organized by the Bahamas Financial Services Board in collaboration with the Ministry of Financial Services, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas and corporate sponsor Ernst & Young. That half-day seminar will take place on January 13th. And in international business news, talk about employees having a say in making history. In a newsletter circulated Monday, American Airlines company CEO Doug Parker told the company's 100,000 employees that he will let them choose the airline's livery now that the merger of U.S. Airways Group and former American parent AMR Corp. is complete. Employees have until January 2nd to cast their votes. The company is also running a Twitter competi competition rather, with the hashtags Keep Tail and Switch Tail. That was your Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain.